Hello, thinkers. Welcome to the ninth episode of the Pilot Links Podcast. I'm your host, Josh, and joining me, as always, is my lovely wife, Mallory. Hi. So for today's podcast, we're going to talk about the butterfly effect. Mm -hmm. Which is something that I've never heard of before. Um, Well, I've heard of it. I just don't know exactly what it is. Josh watches this docu-series on HBO called The Butterfly Effect. Yeah. Um, I tried to watch a couple episodes with him. I still wasn't, like, grasping it. Um, but for those of you who don't know, you you want to kind of explain to us what it is? What the butterfly effect is yeah. or the show? The, the butterfly effect okay. in and of itself. So basically, it's this thing where if a, a small thing were to happen, it would completely change the course of history or what would happen in your life. So I wanted to look it up because when I originally heard about it, I thought it was from a story. And um, I couldn't remember who the author was, so I Googled it at first to see who the author of the story was. Turns out that's not the how it originated. I found on a Washington Post, uh, they have like a small article about it called The Butterfly Effect's Origin. And in that, they talk about, um, it says Larry McClemens is the author, uh, that it actually originated from a meteorologist in 1972 uh, they said something along the lines like a small change in one place can lead to large differences mm-hmm. basically on the weather or something. And So kind of like, is it like similar or different to like the snowball effect? You know what I'm saying? It's different because snow snowball effect is where, let's say like you, for instance, the analogy of this is if you push a small snowball down a hill, it builds. Yeah. So that's like saying like, let's, I'm trying to think of an, an example. Like when you start school, I guess, or that's not a good example. I'm trying to think of something. So the butterfly effect, let me, let me see if I understand this, is saying like one small change can like lead to bigger changes. Yeah. Or one decision that you make could be the cause of something later on. Okay. I think that's why I was like comparing it to the snowball effect because like the snowball effect, you know, it's bigger over time. Right. And that's how, I kind of was like, I connect the snowball effect more to like negative okay. things. Like mm-hmm. it's, that's how it was always used. I think it could be work. We could work for more positive things as well. Mm-hmm. It's just like an action grows bigger because you made that action. Yeah. But so for this episode, I kind of want to do three things. I wanted to pick something in our life. Oh. And if we changed it in some way, mm-hmm. how would our lives be different? So I would do it for me personally, and you would do it for you personally, and then we do one for history and or like society and see what happens. Let's do it. Okay. Do you want to go first? Um, no, you this go? is your TED talk. Okay. You okay. Do it. Oh, my TED talk. <laughs> I wish. That'd be so fun. But uh, I don't have anything like in, like intelligent, I feel like, to talk mm-hmm. about for a TED talk. But anyway. You'd look good in a power suit, though. Oh, thanks. I think you're a little stage. biased. So for mine, I was thinking of... A big moment for me was when I was 10. I went to a Catholic school from preschool until fourth grade. And we had, gosh, maybe, and this might be a stretch, 100 students in the whole building. And that was pre-K through eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And even then, I think that's too many kids. Like, I don't think it was that many. And then I moved to a public school in a different town. And it went, I think our graduating class was, gosh, close to 400 if I round, I think Mm -hmm. it was, but, um, and then if I would stay there, my class was, I think 15, if that 15, 20, maybe, I don't even think it was that big. Mm -hmm. And that was a big change for me because I went from knowing pretty much everyone in the, the building to knowing no one. Mm-hmm. And I was also, I found out I was behind in math and reading and I had to really work to work to kind of fix that balance. And, and I had no idea I was socially awkward yet until that moment too. So it kind of helped mm-hmm. that weirdness and figuring yeah. out. So it was just a weird, but I've always wondered to this day, what would have happened if I had never if you had stayed at the moved? Yeah, if I had stayed there, well, I would have to have eventually left like since I have to do high school somewhere else, I don't know. I would have either done high school in that town or I don't think I would have. 
You would have uh, gone to like a Moon Catholic. High school. It was a Catholic high school, but it, it was like two towns away. Yeah. I doubt I would have ended up going there, but mm -hmm. it just how your life would have been. Yeah, different. like would yeah. I have been different? Would I have been the same person? Would mm -hmm. I have been? You know, like things that would have been completely different. The people that I associated with would have been different. Everything would have been yeah. so, so weird. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think of, because you really can't, you can't plan out how it would end out because you have no idea. Right. But There's I could say. No way to like go back and, and see. Right. Like soccer wise, I probably wouldn't have. Ever played soccer? No, I would have still played, but I don't think I would have got the opportunities that I had because I was able to go play the select like I talked about in previous episodes. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to have a, like a, I don't know, I guess an edge when I mm -hmm. got to high school and, and soccer was a big part of my identity. And because of soccer is what made me go to Greenville, the college. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I had, soccer i guess if we had just taken that out if i had never played soccer i probably would have never met you which is interesting bizarre yeah. to mm -hmm. think about but i think that would be the like i'll take that as my mm -hmm. butterfly effect if i but if i had played another sport and somehow gone to that school, school at the same time would i still like you know it's just weird how that yeah plans out but what about you what was your um so when we were talking it was funny because mine was actually greenville too oh really um yeah because you know i went to a community college um, in the town I grew up in, um, for, you know, two years or whatever. And, um, I transferred to Greenville. However, when I was like applying, I was like, I'm just going to go wherever I can like get some money or whatever. And, um, Greenville actually offered me like one of their highest like transfer scholarships or whatever. And so, um, that really kind of like sealed the deal for me going there. But mm -hmm. if I had not gotten that, I probably would not have gone there. Okay. Um, I probably would have just stayed and gone to like the university that was, you know, in town. in town. And, um, you know, if I hadn't gone there, I wouldn't have met you. I probably would never have gone on to go get my master's degree. Um, so I don't know. Like that would have changed a lot of stuff. Not that I'm using my master's degree right now, but um, topic for another time. Well, yeah, but you know, it kind of fits with this one. You, that decision to go get that mm -hmm. will affect you forever, and how what you decide for your future will some like mm -hmm. that will play a part in what you decide to do yeah. and. So it's I shouldn't say that I'm not using it because mm -hmm. it was in developmental psychology. And I feel like just having those degrees make me kind of a better person in a sense, because okay. I can kind of relate to people a little bit more. And it really kind of gives me a good kind of base knowledge of like human nature. Right. Um, so I shouldn't say that I'm not using it, but is it worth the $40,000 I paid for it? Maybe not, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You never know. There is the something thing. wrong with our education system. Welcome to our TED Talk. For real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But back to the butterfly effect. That is really interesting. Um, because I think you can do that with like... You can do it with anything in your yeah, life. Yeah, any decision at all. And I feel like this is why I have trouble making decisions. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like I am kind of a perfectionist. And I am an anxious person. So when it comes to making decisions... I'm like, well, what if I make the entirely wrong one mm -hmm. and my life turns out terrible, you know? So you're not thinking of it, using it in the sense of looking at your past outcomes and choosing your future. You're thinking of it as like, oh, this could happen. You're more worried about the future. Aspect yeah. Of that so I typically don't even like think about my past that much Okay. Um, because in my mind, I'm like the past is the past and, you know, I can but learn from it, but I can't mm -hmm. really change it. And so, but I, I am so overly concerned with my future. Uh -huh. And so the butterfly, butterfly effect mostly impacts me. I think, you know, cause I have these thoughts and I didn't know that this is kind of what the butterfly effect was about. Mm. Um, and so I think more than anything, it impacts me presently. Because whenever I am faced with decisions that I have to make in the present, I okay. continuously think about my future. And then, you know, 
when I get to that point in the future, I think, well, shoot. So I guess I do think about my past a little bit because then I think, yeah, well, you'd shoot. Have to, yeah. You know, Cause I think, like, well, you know, otherwise you could, you'd continue to make the same mistake. over. Yeah. Over. Yeah. So, um, but you know, what I, you know, I think, well, what if I had made this decision? I don't, I think I do a pretty good job of not dwelling on it. Mm-hmm. I'm more dwell. Like I said, when it comes to those decisions, making the right one. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's just a weird concept, but now I kind of want to play around and see if if we chose an event in history, mm-hmm. how do we think it would change today? Mm-hmm. So do you have one in mind, or should we just, like, randomly pick one? Or? Randomly pick one for me. So, okay. I'm trying to think. Of, so Independence Day is coming up soon. Okay. What if we didn't win the Revolutionary War in America? was not okay so don't at me history was like one of my worst subjects that was i found it so incredibly uh boring if i'm being completely authentic with you guys um we belonged to (laughs) we we were a colony colony before for england yeah for england yeah okay that's what i thought i did think that um so we'd probably, I don't know though, because I think what we probably would have done is probably licked our wounds for a while. And just done it again. Well, and that's, done it again. that's interesting because you have to think, well, England would then know. Cause they're like, okay, well these people really. They did it once, what's to keep them from doing yeah, it again? Yeah, but the thing is, I think what would really change the whole thing would be how the rest of America, cause we didn't, have the U.S. that we have today, you know, it would take Louisiana Purchase and other, you know, uh, things to create what we have today. So it makes you wonder, well, if it didn't go down the path we did, would France have sold us all this money or stole us all this land? Would these other, because there were other colonies at the time and yeah. I we could have been ended up like Canada. Canada, that's was, true. Is, you know, yeah. was a English colony. Yeah. I also think that winning the Revolutionary War gave us a leg up for everybody else because they were like, oh, they won that war. Yeah, but we also had help from the French. Yeah, yes. But I'm saying, like, I feel like, um, you know, the United States of America is seen as kind of um, like this really great country, which I think it has the potential to be. Mm-hmm. However, like, if you see the stats, we're really not as great uh, as other countries. Which, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think saying. because we have won wars Mm -hmm. it gives us like a leg up you know what i mean in terms of like other countries looking at us at the time for sure too because you have to think like that's our first military conflict and we win yeah you know like you're at a 100 win rate yeah and and alexander like the hamilton Mm -hmm. uh musical like they talk about how shortly after that French Revolutionary War happened, mm-hmm. and they asked us to go, and then we decided not to, even though they helped us, which is kind of <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. it was the right decision because we were, right. yeah. you know, we still yeah. healing from before, but it is kind of a jerk move. Like, yeah. thanks for helping. Uh, good luck with that. You guys got this on your own. Thank you. But yeah, and like looking at it now, there's moments in history that we kind of gloss over, like the Korean and Vietnam Wars yeah. were seen as like losses and things, mm-hmm. and so like. And there's some stuff that we don't even, because that's the thing, who's ever in power of the time gets to dictate history. Yeah. So that's another thing. Like at that point, what would, if we had no one, what would England have done to try and, and there's also a huge gap, you know, like of land and eventually, like, I think it would have been inevitable Mm -hmm. for them to lose control of, but again, Canada, it was, and the, like, so I don't know how. Yeah. I yeah. I honestly just think that the U.S. probably would have. I have to look into that. The whole licked their Canada wounds religion. for a little bit and mm-hmm. then tried again. Um, but also, I feel like this could easily be done with you know an event that has happened recently, which is yeah. like COVID. You know. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I so feel you're saying like what if it hadn't if happened it hadn't at all? Had happened. Yeah. Um, which you know, I feel like we're seeing kind of. You know, we have friends who 
or, you know, looking to buy a house and all that stuff, which the housing market is ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. Great for sellers, not so much yeah. for buyers. Um, and, um, you know, they were having to bid, you know, like 50000 over just to even get their foot in the ring. And then they didn't even get it because somebody outbid them. That's great. Um, and I, and I, you know, I'm not saying I really know a lot about this, like the housing market and everything mm -hmm. like that, but I think COVID had, had a role in it. Yeah, COVID definitely um, affected a lot of businesses. Yeah. And, and like like tonight, you know, Josh and I employment. went to go, we wanted to go get Mexican food and it was closed because they were short staffed. We went to another restaurant, they were closed because they were short staffed. Um, but here's and, the thing though, is, because it brings up two questions. Were they closed due to staffing as far as like COVID wise where people were sick and they couldn't do it? Or was it the fact that people aren't wanting to work because of the wages I, and stuff? I think it's because people don't want to work. Because well, that's what I'm hearing from all these other restaurants. Right. Um, you know, they're offering, you know, you you drive down Manchester and you see, you know, all these, all these windows right. and they say hiring, you know, at blah, 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 an hour, like, you know, open interviews, like whatever. Um, yeah. You just smile at me like that. Because it's like, it was, it was given the location points. I mean, it's Manchester it Road, <laughs> which yeah. goes from... Like it spans forever. I'm not yeah. going to give out my address, Joshua. Don't find us, Joshua. Um, uh, no. So I feel like that has, you know, would there be kind of this, you know, staffing issue, especially that you see in like restaurants, mm -hmm. um, if COVID had never happened? Um, Maybe it's yeah. interesting too because a similar event happened. 100 years ago, 1920, when uh, I think it was the Spanish flu happened, right? Oh, were, yeah, I read about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people were wearing masks back then, too. Yeah, so yeah. it's one of those things where, in that sense, history kind of repeated itself. But um, you just never know. Like, we probably won't know all that comes from this. Mm hmm until another five to once you can look at it like, yeah. in hindsight and everything. I think it's going to take probably a good decade to come out of it fully. Well, I do know um, we'll probably, like as far as medical wise and preparedness, mm -hmm. now that the country's been through it, if this were to happen again, hopefully we could like mm -hmm. cut it off real soon and just make sure it is, mm -hmm. the numbers don't get so bad. And but again, there's also that time where some people will look at it and be like, oh, well, not that many people. Uh, this is, they, yeah. you know, so it's, you don't know. You don't know how yeah. it's going to turn out until later on. But that's an interesting look at it. Mm -hmm. and yeah. It, it just makes you wonder like, yeah. what will happen, what decision will happen now that we'll look back on years from now I'll be like oh gosh like what why did we even think about it yeah. it's kind of like fashion if you think about it like you look oh. back at pictures like why did we ever decide to wear that kind of stuff you know what i'm saying yeah and that's kind of it and it can be the butterfly effects is a butterfly brooch oh my gosh why oh, if i had just gosh. worn a different brooch but you never know yeah a different brooch so i this is not really a butterfly effect themed but let's say let's Let's make a event. Let's create our butterfly mm -hmm. and predict. Yeah, let's predict the future. Okay. Based on this event. So right now, um, what's what's big right now besides COVID? I'm trying to think. There's any technology? Um, Elon or, Musk. Elon Musk. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I was just throwing things. Uh, Beyonce. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Names. Um, <laughs> I was just throwing things out. Elon um, Musk then Beyonce. That's a weird, I don't know. Weird transition. I was just trying to think of like what's popular right now and Tesla. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Beyonce's always mind. popular. Beyonce, She's been popular forever. I am Beyonce always. Oh, yeah. so. um, I'm trying to think what's like super popular right now. Um, well, these COVID shots, you know, people are saying, you know, the COVID vaccines, like, you know, we, you know, I talk to people who aren't vaccinated and they say, you know, I am actively choosing not to be vaccinated because I don't know how this is going to impact my body in 10 years, which right. yeah, it's a is safe valid, choice. you know, it's valid. I, mean, like, I don't know right. what it's going to do. I, you know, I myself have been vaccinated. Yeah, um, so have you, um, but you know, I think that's a valid choice 
you know, and I think that what they're doing is considering the butterfly effect, right? Because uh, in a sense, because I guess in a way, yeah, they're thinking what could be the repercussions of this yeah. choice. So yeah, yeah, I think like, that what if falls. this decision yeah. makes all these other bad decisions or bad things happen in my life? Just right. Because of yeah. This decision. So I feel like not to just bring up COVID again, yeah. but I mean, it just has been such a big politics, something and, you know, yeah. big deal in society and in the world even, you know, yeah. lately. And so I feel like, um, you know, that's a good, like real world example of the butterfly effect because yeah. those, the, you know, the people who are actively choosing not to be vaccinated are, or are actually cons- choosing or they, yeah, yeah, actively choosing because they considering- don't want to get, you know, COVID and, Right. Or they want to lessen their chances or they want to, you know, protect those around them. You know, I don't know. So, um, I feel like that's, that's an example too. Yeah. Um, but we are running out of time. So, Oh, we are. Thank you all for listening and, uh, let us know if there's any, I don't know, events or topics, yeah, yeah. topics you want us to talk about or a butterfly effect that, Mm -hmm. You know, if you enjoy the yeah. thought of a butterfly effect or if like well, in a moment in your life that you think would be an interesting thing. I don't know. But uh, hopefully you're all doing well. Hopefully you have a good week. And until we talk again, mm-hmm. never stop pondering. Hope you enjoyed our TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye.